So Boz did a Quest 3 Heavy Ask Me Anything on Instagram just under 24 hours ago at the time of upload, and as usual, I like to put everything up on my channel for all you non-Instagram users. He talks a lot about Quest 3 and goes deep into some age-old VR questions, particularly around pass-through improvements, Quest Pro 2, eye tracking, and reducing weight and thickness in standalone. As usual, make sure to like so others can see the video too, and subscribe if you want to see more. It's a good one. Over to you, Boz. Yes, it is used for more things than just the setup. Uh, and you know, I, I'm sure we will continue to unlock new and exciting use cases of it. But yeah, no, we use it for quite a few different things. Uh, depending on the lighting conditions and the context, uh, we will fire that sensor up. I get this question a lot and I really love it because it, I, I know there are people out there who are such tremendous fans of this technology um, and they're in a country that's not currently one blade that we sell in and it's gotta be incredibly frustrating. Uh, and my heart does go out to those people it is really an economic decision, um, and it's, it's on a country by country basis. There's a, a, a base cost to expanding to a new country uh, in terms of localizing the content and bringing sales and making the retail partnerships and dealing with whatever kind of taxes or tariffs or import uh, laws there are. And so it's uh, it's just a matter of how to efficiently scale this up to the world. It's something we wanna do, obviously. We're super aligned, we want more customers. Um, it's just a matter of, of making the economics work as we continue to be really thoughtful about how we progress. All right, I know, I know this question. I know I should answer you know, the mixed reality or the, the pancake optics, the display, or these big ticket items. Honestly, I am loving the colorways. I got the orange uh, you know, facial interface and strap, and I just love it. It <laughs> brings me some kind of joy. There's a lot of great features. You don't have to pick one, but uh, today, just just today, I was just thinking, my son was, my son saw it. My son's uh, eight years old and he was like, oh, it comes in new colors, that's awesome. So I don't know, that's what I'm thinking about today. Glass, mostly. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, there was a great recent teardown and, and certainly the battery is a, is a weight contributor. You can offload the battery with a cord and I think that's operationally, logistically, and aesthetically bad, uh, but you can do it. Um, but that's only like 20% of the weight. Uh, the glass, you just, it, it's a, <laughs> you have a big heavy lens there um, hanging right off your face. Um, and, you know, there are long-term display paths that we thought about where you could start to, to really reduce that surface area. Are you dealing with waveguides or lasers or these types of things? Um, but as long as you have this like, this kind of fundamentally heavy optical system um, with a lot of precision. You, you can't replace it with plastic and maintain a lot of the optical properties uh, today um, that, that we have. So, so yeah, I mean, that's the, uh, certainly that's the biggest challenge is the display system. Well, I know this is a more expensive headset and memory is a, a not a trivial contributor to the overall price. Um, so we wanted to keep a relatively lower cost one in the market at 128 uh, and also for people who are really heavily doing um, streaming uh, from a PC um, or who are using this for primarily social or, um, you know, even some work use cases, um, they may not need more memory. So we thought that was a great place to do. And then for people who, for whom this is really um, an immersive gaming um, device, they're using it standalone, um, they want more memory. We heard that loud and clear. So actually we think this is probably where like the market actually wants to be honestly, is like these two price, these two uh, price points, these two memory SKUs. Um, and so far, I have to say that the sales data suggests that's true. Uh, my kids are home. Thrilled with all of people's experiences with pass through so far, um, which has been super positive. We've seen people, you know, <laughs> going about their, their day, doing their dishes with it. I uh, love to see those videos. But the answer is yes, it will continue to improve, uh, uh, you know, as we continue to get real world lighting conditions and information from the headsets that have been picked up. We start to tune the, the the algorithms that drive it uh, more effectively. Um, and so I do think it will continue to improve modestly uh, from here for a little while uh, as we kind of do a better job depth estimating with where your hands are and, and working with the distortion around that uh, and things like that. So yeah, we've, we've, we're gonna continue to work on it as we have with the Quest Pro. Well, we certainly didn't anticipate the specific things people would be doing. Um, and so uh, I didn't, the dishes uh, use case, for example, people doing the dishes and wanting to watch a video, but your hands are wet, so you don't want to use your phone, you can't do it, you can do it in, in MR. Those are super cool, I didn't see those coming. Uh, but I've always believed in this tech and I always believed, I believe there would be use cases that we didn't see coming. So I'm not surprised that there are these types of things out there, but the specific things that we're seeing are, are delightful and surprising. 
Uh, so we're such a big fan of eye tracking. Obviously, we were thrilled to get it into the Quest Pro. Um, and it's, it's still one of my favorite features of the Quest Pro, especially because I do spend a lot of time in, in workrooms meetings on that device. Um, and so, uh, and we really have been testing it for a long time as a 2D navigation UI paradigm uh, in conjunction with hands. Um, and so we've, we've known this for a long time. We've, we've been pursuing this for a long time. It is just a, a, a trade-off on cost and weight and obviously extra sensors um, against the product. So we're, you know, what we're really focusing on is continuing to be able to deliver at high degrees of precision um, in uh, more efficient architectures, both computationally and price standpoint, um, so we can make it into every single headset. Uh, I don't, I can't tell you when that's going to happen. We look at this; every single headset is kind of its own recipe. But at some point, yes, it will be part of the base package. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when, though. Yeah, they'll be coming later this year, um, and it's really very simple. It's just um, a, a program that's running when you're in pass-through that you can still see, access, and interact with. Um, so, you know, right now when you're in pass-through, it's not uncommon, you're interacting with RUI. Um, and so you, you could have other things there that you could interact with that aren't just the panels that we provide. Um, and so we're going to start to build that. We'll, and, and then over time, that will become more and more developable <laughs> by, by third parties and beyond. It will take a while. Again, it's kind of a you know, completely new ecosystem, completely new set of software kind of requirements. Um, but we are excited to, to roll out the very first version um, later this year or early next year. You know, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Um, we have a ton of headsets in development at all times. You know, two, three, four headsets in development, uh, some from concept phase to active development phase. Um, and some of them get pretty far and then we decide not to ship them. And some of them don't get very far at all and we decide to ship them. And a few make it all the way to the end. Um, and we say, yep, this is the right combination of features, software ecosystem, uh, capabilities, price, that it's gonna be both a product that people are gonna appreciate in the market and it advances the goals that we have for the ecosystem. Um, and so we have lots of headsets in development that could be a Quest Pro 2. Um, and it's just a question of if they mature enough. In the meantime, I'm very happy with my Quest Pro and of course Quest 3. So, you know, um, and a lot of people working on those products, by the way, want them to be the Quest Pro 2. Um, so it's really just, it's, we wait until everything comes together to decide. Uh, appreciated pieces of software running on the Quest headsets. It's a, it's a phenomenal team. I think they've done great work. It's one of the most frequently used pieces of software on the device. No surprise, the web's pretty cool, pretty important. Um, and so we're constantly improving it. Um, I don't have a specific set of, of features. Maybe I should grab one. Um, but yeah, no, we're constantly working on it, on, on improving it and making sure it's more capable. So yeah, it's, it's, it's one that we're quite proud of. You know, this is an age old question in technology. Uh, and the history of technology is, is if you had to bet on the cheap thing getting good or the good thing getting cheap first, it's usually the cheap thing getting good first. And the reason is just economies of scale. Uh, once something is cheap, it gets volume. Volume drives scale, drives investment, drives ecosystems, uh, not just in software, but in hardware. Um, and then it improves. Uh, but there's, there are quite a few examples that go the other way. So, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, probably not an either or, it's probably a little bit of both. Certainly having, um, you know, these pioneering flagship uh, experiences informs, you know, what direction to take um, the kind of more affordable, accessible ones over time. Um, that's one reason that we do both, right? We have a Quest Pro and we have uh, the Quest 3 lineup and we've kind of tried to make sure that we can do both sides of it. Ah, it's good to hear there's another fellow Open Periphery fan. I've been a fan of Open Periphery for a long time. Uh, I find it, I like the airflow in there and it doesn't distract me from my immersion. Um, and I've got, you know, great ability to kind of absorb my environment when I need to. Um, so I'm a huge fan of it and that's all I'm gonna say about it. 